Welcome to my review of the Jinhao 159. The other day I was online doing a little bit of, I guess you'd call it impulse shopping, buying some fountain pens, uh, looking for something that just uh, inexpensive uh, to have fun with. I ended up, <laughs> I ended up buying four uh, because the prices were so good. And so I thought I would share, uh, as each one comes in, a review of these pens because uh, some of them, uh, like this one, the Jinhao 159, there are there are some reviews out there, a good review by Goulet Pens. Uh, not trying to reinvent the wheel here, really, but uh, some of the pens that, that I'll have over the next couple of weeks, I, I couldn't find reviews of. I was curious, so they were inexpensive enough. I thought I'd give them a shot and share with you what I found. Uh, this one, 159, actually, again, you'll find some reviews of this pen, and all of them are going to have a few things in common. And uh, the first, m most obvious is the size of this pen. It's a pretty big pen. Uh, I actually got a couple of things out here just to, to share with you the size, to compare. This is just a normal, everyday uh, pencil. This one's a Mitsubishi. And you can tell by the, the size of this pen next to the pencil that it is, is quite big. I have another uh, Jinhao pen that is a, a nice fountain pen, kind of based loosely on the Parker 51. You can tell the clip's a bit different, uh, but similar in shape. I'll review that one for you later. Uh, but size-wise, it really makes that look fairly small. Uh, so that gives you some idea and maybe another frame of reference. This is uh, Uniball Signo, great gel pen. And as you can see, that's it's nearly twice the size of that pen. So it gives you some idea. Uh, weight, uh, is it's a heavy pen. It's not made out of just light, uh, cheap plastic, so it actually has some some heft to it, and I think it's 50 grams is is what it's supposed to be on the, the specs, so a fairly heavy pen. That means that for some people, uh, if you like to write with that posted, that's that's gonna have some weight to throw around. I, I like to write with it posted. Uh, it is a screw-in cap, a screw-on cap, so uh, see if a bit that post it is pretty secure. The first couple of times that I went to post it, honestly, I thought ah, I'm going to scratch the finish, but it didn't. It posted well and it does stay secure. Uh, as a, a nice looking pin. Let me show you here. They have the Jinhao uh, chariot on the crest on the clip. The clip is uh, it is a good a good stiff clip. It's going to stay in place, although to be honest, I can't imagine wearing a shirt with a pocket big enough for this pen. I just don't think that's going to happen. You can see, I'll show you there since it's easy to see in the light today, uh, it is a stamped metal pen. You can kind of see back there that it's just stamped. Uh, but it looks nice from the front. Again, it is a, an inexpensive pen, so it's not like uh, you're expecting perfect handcrafted stuff here. Uh, here is the nib. It's a number six nib. It's a medium. I don't think I've seen any of these that weren't medium. Uh, that's that's what I like most of the time, either a fine or a medium. And it, it writes pretty well. We'll look at that here in a second. You can see on the nib that it says it is 18K gold plated. Uh, it's not. That's that's quite obvious. It's not. Uh, I think they use the same, the same nib whether they are or they aren't. So it's going to be stamped whether it has any gold plating or not. I do actually have one that I'll review later on that does have the gold plating on it and that is an excellent pen especially for the price of a of the average Jin Hao. All right, let's see how this pen writes. Again it is a Jin Hao 159 and this is a J. Urban. It's having a little bit of trouble, a little bit dry. I actually haven't run into that too much. I may have had the cap off too long while I was getting this set up. Uh, and this is Blue Azure. It's a little bit of a, almost like a turquoise, very light blue. Uh, I like a darker than that. I, I like dark blues or a blue black. Uh, but this, I, I had this bottle available. So this is what I used this morning when I filled it. And uh, th by the way, I didn't mention this, it can use uh, international cartridges, long, short, doesn't matter. Uh, and that's probably what I'll do most often with it. But Jinhao actually does provide a, uh, a 
piston cartridge. So that's that's there. Uh, it comes with the pin, and it's actually not bad. I've had several of these in house, and I haven't had any trouble with it. So uh, that's what I have here. All in all, I, I would say that it, it writes smoothly. Uh, it takes a normal number six nib. You can't interchange that. I think Goulet mentions that they have some of those available. And it's a, it's a good pen. And so I would highly recommend it. Okay, so that is my review on the Jin Hao 159. And uh, it's a good pen, great pen for the money. You're only going to pay about $10 or $12 for it here in the U.S., even less outside the U.S., and uh, it writes well, it's good in the hand, it's a great pen for uh, a beginner, I think. Uh, just keep in mind that it is a larger pen and a heavier pen. That could be a deal breaker for some, and that's understandable, but uh, a great pen. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. I am going to have some other reviews of other Jin Hao's and other uh, Chinese pens, affordable pens. So if that's what you're looking for, come back and watch those videos. Have a great day.